Welcome to the class of ECT 205 Network Theory. Let us begin with the first topic, Energy Source Transformation. Energy source is a device which generates electrical energy. The classification is done based on voltage current characteristic. It is divided into ideal and practical sources, which is again divided into voltage source and current source, and further subdivided into AC and DC sources. So let us learn the first type, ideal voltage source. A DC source is represented by plus or minus V, and an AC source is represented by this symbol, small letter V of T. It means that it is varying at every time instant. So if you look at the VI characteristic, you can see that the voltage is a constant irrespective of the current drawn from it. Example is a battery source which gives constant output voltage. Next we have an ideal current source. The current source is represented by an arrow symbol for DC source and for an AC source we have an arrow with a tilde sign on top of it. Here the current is a constant irrespective of the voltage drawn from that supply. The next is a practical voltage source. In practical sources we have an internal resistance for that source. Due to this there will be a drop IR and the net voltage is reduced and it will not be a constant. The voltage decreases as the current drawn from it increases. Similarly for AC sources, due to internal impedance, the voltage will decrease. Next one is a practical current source. This is the DC source and this is an AC source. For voltage source, the resistance is in series, but for current source, it is in parallel. Dependent sources are those sources in which output depends on some other voltage or current source. They are also known as control source. There are four types which we will learn about them in detail. So this is the classification. In voltage control voltage source, the voltage between the points A and B controls or affects the voltage source between the points C and D. So the voltage V is directly proportional to V1 and we can equate it with a constant mu. So this is a voltage source whose output depends upon this voltage source. Hence the name voltage control voltage source. Similarly, we have a current control voltage source CCVS which affects this voltage source. So, output voltage V is directly proportional to I1 and equated using a constant resistance Rn. Third one is VCCS voltage control current source where the current source I depends upon the voltage source V1 and also we have current control current source where one current source controls another current source. This is an important derivation in network theory. We have to prove that a voltage source with internal resistance Rv in series can be converted into a current source with parallel resistance RL. RL is the load resistance for both the circuits. So from the first circuit, let's write the equation for I that goes to the load. The current IV is voltage V divided by RV plus RL. Similarly, in the second circuit, the current I1 which goes into the load is capital I into Ri by Ri plus Rl. We have to write the resistance for the opposite branch. So these are the two equations that we have written and 
we have to assume that the above two sources are equivalent. Thus the current IV is equal to II. So now when we equate the two equations we get V is equal to RV plus RL which is equal to IRI by RI plus RL. The right hand side IRI can be written as V. So both the V's get cancelled and we get RV plus RL is equal to RI plus R. Again RL gets cancelled so we get RV is equal to RI. So what we understand from this is that the internal resistance of voltage source is equal to internal resistance of current source. So what we can conclude is that the voltage source V with internal resistance R which will be in series can be converted into a current source I with internal resistance R itself but that will be in parallel. In order to understand this concept better we can do a problem. So the question is that a voltage source of 10 volt has an internal resistance of 2 ohm. Convert this into its equivalent current source. Since it is a voltage source we have to draw the resistance 2 ohm in series with it. In order to find the equivalent current source divide the voltage source divide by the resistance so we will get 5 ampere. Then what we studied in the previous derivation is that the internal resistance have to be same for equivalent voltage and current source. So it has to be both 2 ohm and since it is a current source we have to place it in parallel. For voltage source it is in series, for current source it will be in parallel. So this is the final equivalent circuit.